Hi, I'm Sarah from Identity Leathercraft and today we're going to look at edge finishing your leathers to give yourself a professional edge to your leather goods. It's about what will make something look quality. There are two different types of leather, vegetable tan leather and mineral tan leather and different techniques apply to each one due to the nature of the way they're tanned. So vegetable tan leather can be wet molded and shaped as one of its specific unique properties and you can use that to get your edge to really smooth down, to round over and give a really beautiful quality edge. Different people use different methods in edge finishing so you might see something different to what you're showing today on other tutorials. We're just going to run through a quick basic way of doing it um, but some people might use saddle soap, they might use gum trag accounts, some people will even use water and canvas. Uh, so we'll use some methods today but maybe experiment and see how you get to like the edges you finish. So to start off we'll look at vegetable tan leather. We're going to take the starting point will be our, using an edge beveler tool. So I'm going to take my tool and as with any leather craft the most important thing is using a sharp tool. So before I start I'm just going to give it a quick strop. So I'm using an identity store piece of strop leather which has been made with stropping paste in the tannage. So I'm going to rub it down with a piece of jeweler's rouge chalk and then just pressing down at 45 degree angle, pressing down into the strop and dragging it towards myself and then going back into the same grooves each time until you create two parallel tracks. And this presses down and it allows that gap in between the two to be polished out as well as the back of the bevel of the blade. So you have microscopic particles which collect after a bit of use and you want to be polishing those away so you don't get any drag. For the camera today I've used a size 4 bevel so you can see this gap um, very clearly. When you're doing your belts or anything, it's kind of an aesthetic as to which one you choose, but generally it'd be a size three or size two. This would be for a bigger, heavier leather and give you more of a rounded edge. Then we take our vegetable tan leather strip or whatever we're edging, placing the beveler on, we're just gonna shave off a piece. This is just gonna allow the leather to round over I take it top, turn it over and take it off the other side, trying to take a regular smooth action. The next stage is we're going to put a gum tragacanth onto the leather to help to round over the leather and smooth the fibres down before we burnish. So I'm using this product, um, gum tragacanth is a natural plant uh, material, it's kind of quite liquid in form and it gives a kind of wet, wetting action to the leather. So I'm just applying the gum trigacanth onto the top of the leather. And you work on this while it's still wet. So that's just gone onto that top side. And then I'm using a traditional wood slicker, uh, or you can use a bone folder. And I'm just gonna give this, start giving this a rub going in one direction, move it down to hold it firm or you can put this into a stitching pony if you want firm and then I'm going to start rubbing it and very quickly you should be able to see that the leather is wet moulding and shaping into a rounded edge and smoothing over and the more heat and friction I build up at this point the more the fibres bond together and start to shine you can tell when your edge is done, when it goes darker and it goes shiny in the light. I don't know if you can see that there, the light reflecting off where it's burnished. And that's giving you a sealed edge, which you can then treat with an edge finish in a contrast color or the same color and maybe put a lacquer on the top. These Feebings products, uh, been specifically designed to work with vegetable tan leather and have been used for many years and are very popular with a lot of our leather crafters. So it's Feebing's Edge Coat which can go on next. So taking another dauber, making sure you've got one without the gum tragacanth. 
and just carefully applying the finish, making sure you keep it on the top. And then we'll leave that to dry. And this is one I've painted earlier to show you. So I've put the Feebings on, it's dried off. And then I've put on top of this one a small amount of vegetable protect wax, veg, uh, our veg protect, which has beeswax in it. And then if I lightly just give that another rub over, this will burnish the wax into the top finish and give it a nice matte finish. If you want a high gloss finish, then use the neutral top coat, which will give it a really nice gloss finish to your products. So that will give you an idea of how you edge finish vegetable tan leather. But this method won't work on mineral tan leathers. When you try to do the edge beveling and the slicking with this, this method, it can actually do the opposite and can actually raise the fibers up. So some of you may have tried that before and wonder why it's going wrong. It's because you need a different method and a different product to do your mineral tan leathers. So these are some mineral tan leathers that we've done with contrast colors. So these are two we've done with just contrast edging. So these are um, some black leather with some red and some turquoise, just to show how you can use that. And that is on a mineral tan leather. This is using our leading edge foundation method, which I'll just talk through with you now. So we're gonna look now at the identity leather craft system. So I'm taking this wallet, which I've spatter decorated. I've got three layers of leather here, and this is a mineral tanned leather. It's a part of our calf assorted bag pieces. And I want to be able to finish this edge and get a nice contrast a turquoise color to tie in with my design. So this time round, because I can't slick or polish in the same way, but I want my fibers to soften down, I'm gonna use something called edge foundation, which is this bottle here. So this has properties that act as a primer for the um, edge paints to stick to, but also it acts as a filler. So when you've got two or three layers, it will just gently fill into those layers so that when you put your edge finish on, you get that nice smooth look without it showing the layers through the edge paint. So it's just a white liquid that's clear. So I'm using another clean applicator and you just, rub it on. Now this, this one it's important you always go in the same direction. So just keep working it over. You don't need very much. It goes quite a long way. And again just keep it onto the top. And I generally just smooth over with my finger and you can feel it smoothing and filling as you work. It starts to feel very satiny and smooth. And this has just helped all those fibres to bond down. So the next stage is to apply the leading edge paint, the first coat. So I'm gonna put my applicator in. In fact, for this one, I'm gonna show you using the edge roller pen. Um, this has little gills on it, which collect and store the paint, and it's very controllable, you can roll it across. And this is a hand tool, but it's based on the design of what they would use in the big factories for doing handbag making and doing the edges. Okay, so I'm just dipping it in. I don't want to have too much drop, droplets coming off, so I'm just gonna let some of the drops fall in. And then I'm gonna let it roll over. Now the first coat, I'm not gonna over worry if it's looking a bit thin in places because we are gonna put a second coat on and I just wanna get the base adhering. A bit like when you're painting your skirting boards. So this is our first coat. You can see it starts beading together. It's quite a thick, viscous paint and then I would leave that to dry. So I will carefully turn it round to one I did earlier. So 
So now I would let that dry. It doesn't take particularly long, maybe leave it for a good half an hour or so, or you can apply um, a heat air gun over it just to speed it up. But once this is dry, sometimes with the first coat, and this can be true of the vegetable tan process too, you pick up little air bubbles and air pockets. So one good tip to do um, between coats once it's dry is just to get a very fine piece of sandpaper and just give it a little gentle sand over just to take some of those little bubbles out of the top surface. So once that's done, you can then apply a second coat and this time you can be a little bit more allowing it to bead on the top of the leather. So this will give you some of the look that you can see on some of the smart handbags where you get this little beaded edge going on. So instead of rubbing it down quite hard, hold it quite loosely above the top and just allow it to bead up. And this will give you a little bit of rounding as it dries. Just even that off a little. There, so you can start to see there is a little bubble forming on that top one, but this is because I put it on the top of one that wasn't dried. So I'm just gonna smooth that out. And then we leave that to dry. The leading edge paints are a matte, so they will dry matte finish. And just to finish, if you want to keep it matte, to finish it off, just rub a little bit of the Veg Protect wax or another type of beeswax product gently over the top once it's dry and give it a little rub down with your slicker and that will give you just a lovely matte finish. If you want a nice bright gloss finish to your goods for any reason, then use the neutral edge coat paint or there is a satin finish top coat as well. And again, you just once it's dry, apply that clear coat, leave it to dry and that's all you need to do. But if you're using the wax, it's worth giving it a little burnish and slick to let that wax just seal, create a seal on your edge. And that is how you finish mineral tan leathers. You can use these leading edge paints too on veg tan. They're designed to work with both, but the Feebings products will work best on the vegetable tan leather. So I hope that's helped explain the differences and I hope you found that useful today. Thank you.